Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So today's episode was made possible by the amazing people over at Custom Dragon Highlander. Eleanor put on a, well, amazing event where, hey, the Custom Dragon Highlander community decided to design Pokemon. Gotta catch them all cards. And uh, yeah, these are some incredible designs that would make some amazing cards in Commander. It's amazing commanders themselves. So with all that said, a giant thank you to the amazing community out there. If you are looking to join that great community of custom Dragon Highlander players, make sure you check out that Discord link, the Discord invite link in the description below. And again, a huge thank you to all the designers, all the voters in this contest, and a big thank you to Alano for putting it all together. So with all that said, let's jump into the Pokemon Magic Cards. So let's start things off at 10th place, and actually we do have a tie for 10th place, so I'll be showing you both of them. That being said, it is Gerontina I'm going to be showing first, Exile Lord, and uh, my apologies, I'm probably going to mispronounce some of these. I am a bit of an older Pokemon player, I played a lot of Gen 1 and a little bit of Gen 2, but really haven't played much since, uh, except for a little bit of Pokemon Infinite Fusion very recently, which is a really spicy game. That being said, I might recognize some of these Pokemon, but not know how to say their names. So, Giratina is what I'm going to say. Anyways, designed by Gareth, a 4-7 Beast Dragon for 8 mana, sorry, 7 mana in Rakdos. There we go. Tap on a Cage Counter on target creature. If a creature with a Cage Counter on it would die, exile it instead. Tap on a Creature card, exile Giratina, exile Lord on the battlefield under your control. It gains haste till out of turn. At the beginning of your X end step, it's over owner gains control of it and this is what Gareth had to say about the design I was looking at some old Pokemon I really like and I was thinking which one would be the best to translate to magic Snorlax was too basic Lucario too obvious but Giratina would make a great one to translate I thought Giratina would be cunning and make deals with mortals granting immortality hence the returning from death but because he's like the demon, you would be put into an inescapable deal like a cage. Yeah, this is a really spicy design and I absolutely love the, yeah, cool, I'll give you a cage counter. I'll utilize you later when you get taken out, essentially. You give it back. Again, there's part of a deal kind of going on with this. But again, you could design the deck around, well, maybe I'll untap this quite a bit. You know, maybe some threat effects. You'd be able to get more cage counters out there. Be able to... Well, gain control of all your opponent's creatures when you need to, maybe with a Wrath, and then also be able to, well, maybe sacrifice your opponent's creatures instead of actually giving them back or utilizing them in different ways. So yeah, a very spicy commander. Again, congratulations on your 10th place finish, Gareth. Moving on again, tied for 10th, we've got Silvali Synthetic Savior by Moose. A 3-3 Chimera Shapeshifter with Trample that costs 5 mana. <gasps> Artifact and enchantment spells you cast cost one less to cast. Trample, pay Wooberg until end of turn. It gains all colors and abilities of target and modified creature you control. And this is what Moose had to say about the design. I chose Silvali as the design is extremely intriguing to me, and I feel that it is both a neglected yet incredibly powerful and unique Pokemon. The ability sharing ability and access to all colors stems from the Chimera and Synthetic nature of both type, Null and Silvani, where the Evolve form has a unique Arceus system that allows it to swap between different types and abilities across the spectrum of Pokemon, almost like a 9-in-1 toaster oven that can do air frying, grilling, convection oven, pressure cooking, the works, all with the changing of a disc. Well, well, yeah, you definitely captured that in many ways. I love this design. Five color is always going to speak to me. And this is very spicy. Being able to go into artifacts, going into enchantments, and also saying, you know what? Let's just make it so that we have a modified creature in play. And now I'm going to gain all those colors and all those abilities. So yeah, you can do a lot with this one. Again, a fantastic design, Moose. Congratulations on your 10th place finish. Next up, though, we're moving on to ninth place with Dark Ray, the Lunar Sleep from Hollow. A 2 4 Nightmare. Yeah, this thing is quite nightmaric. A 4 1 Blue and a Black Bad Dreams at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. Each tapped creature that player controls deals 2 damage to its controller. Hypnosis. Demir, Demir, pay 2 life, put a stun counter on target creature. Then if it's untapped, tap it. Otherwise, put additional stun counter on it. And this is what Hollow had to say about the design. Since his first appearance in the Diamond and Pearl games alongside Cresselia, Dark Ray always had a reputation as the Freddy Krueger of Pokemon with his nightmare inducing abilities. To reflect that, I focus on his signature ability, Bad Dreams, as his primary win condition with Hypnosis, used to help support that goal for his playstyle. 
there are many ways for blue to tap down your opponent's creatures in plenty that prevent them from untapping like sleep breaching leviathan dream tides embargo and exhaustion just to name a few alongside cards that put stun counters on creatures however what most people often miss is that black has quite a few cards that specifically interact with tap creatures like assassinate deathstroke murderous compulsion stone catapult and the old assassin creatures again just to name a few add in some support to take advantage of your opponents tapping boards like Death of Dreams, Barring 100,000 Arrows, Verity Circle, Scroll of Isildur, and the OG Tamiyo, and you've got a recipe for a very strong control burn hybrid value shell that has truly been slept on for years. Well, Hollow, yeah, you summed it up perfectly. Absolutely incredible design. I love this one. And yeah, you can do some pretty brutal things with it. So again, congratulations, Hollow, on your ninth place finish. But now let's move on to 8th place with Ditto All But One from Genji's Tights. A 1-1 one, one Shapeshifter Ooze with Flash that costs 5 mana. If it is your commander, choose a color before the game begins. It's that color, choose other colors. You may have Ditto enter the battlefield as a copy of a permanent, except it's a 1-1 one, one Shapeshifter creature named Ditto All But One and loses all other card types. And this is what Genji Sites had to say about the design. Ditto has always been my favorite Pokemon since I was a kid. So when I saw this challenge, I instantly knew what I wanted to do. I decided to steer towards a Sakashima type clone with a twist. That being the ability to choose the second color of the commander, adapting to any type of play style. And yeah, Genji Sites, I love this design. It encapsulates Ditto perfectly. And yeah, I, I know this one because this is part of the original 151. But yeah, Ditto is a crazy cool commander. I love that you can pick that extra color. There's some little spice to that as well with the cloning effect so yeah a great design congratulations genji's tights on your eighth place finish but now let's move on to seventh place with king game at the overlord from tiger a 3-3 Samurai Noble with Bushido 3 that costs 5 mana in total in Orzhov. At the beginning of your end step, if you control less creatures named Ponard, then can gain its power. Create a number of 1-1 one, one white and black Samurai creature tokens named Ponyard equal to the difference. And this is what Tiger had to say about the design. King Gambit was an instant favorite for me as I've been a fan of Bisharp since its introduction in Gen 5. My design idea stems from how King Gambit deals leads an army of lesser Bisharp and Ponyards to a vicious Shogunite. A Samurai leader Pokemon that merged Bushido with building a token army felt like a distinct design direction that no other Pokemon could narratively fit. Well, I definitely agree with that. I mean, at least to my knowledge of Pokemon, and this is a very cool design. I love how power plays an aspect into this, and being able to get more and more power on this means more and more and more tokens. Again, equal difference. That's a very spicy effect. I love it. You can go in a lot of directions with this. Go wide, you can go wrist scratch, you can do whatever you want with this. A really cool design. So again, Tiger, congratulations on your set seventh place finish. Moving on to 6th place though, we've got Volcarona, Ash and Sun from Ebb and Flow. A 3-3 Insect Avatar with flying that costs 5 mana in Boros. Fiery Dance, whenever you play a card from Exile, you get a counter on target creature. Quiver Dance, whenever you gain life, you may exile the top card of your library. If you do, you may play that card until the end of your next turn. Morning Sun, tap, you gain X life for X the greatest number of counters on a creature among creatures you control. And this is what Ebb and Flow had to say about the design. When I found out the challenge was to be Pokemon themed, I knew that I wanted to make my all-time favorite Pokemon. Pokemon Volcarona. I base each of its abilities off of some of the staple moves Volcarona has access to in the video games, and I am glad to see people also enjoyed what I made. Thank you all once again for voting for my card. Well, Evan Flow, a fantastic design. I can see why, yeah, you finished so high in this contest. A really cool concept. Being able to play cards from Exile. Yeah, there's a lot of new Impulse Draw cards that can do that. Being able to get counters on creatures, that's great. And that plays so well in that last ability, helping you gain even more life, which plays well in the other ability, which helps you, you know, get no more Impulse Draw. So these really work well together. I love how they interact. And a lot of cool things can happen with a deck like this. So again, Evan Flow, congratulations on your sixth place finish. But now let's move on to number five with Misingo, who wasn't by Oni. And yeah, I might have misspoken earlier because technically, right, 151 with Mew. Kind of like 152 with Misingo, which is a really crazy card. 831 at Nightmare Shapeshifter. For four mana, every single color but green. It gets plus two plus zero for each opponent with a corruption counter on it. Whenever it deals combination to a player, for each opponent put a corruption counter on target non-land permanent player controls. It's a one-one nightmare creature. With this creature gets plus two plus zero for each nightmare you control. 
is goaded, loses all their types, and as long as it's goaded, it has corruption counter on it. Oh my goodness, this is spicy. Oni says, for this guy, I want it to be as flavorful as humanly possible. Built her on the fact that Masingo in the games is a glitchy buggy mess that corrupts the game. The greenless color dandy fits the idea of a glitch Pokemon turning everything into more glitches perfectly, and the high power to absurdly low toughness ratio is in service of the OG pseudo Pokemon's actual stat lines in red, blue, and yellow. The only thing I regret with this design is not making a bird to reference the Pokemon type it had in the games sometimes. Well, regret nothing, Oni, because my goodness, this is such a spicy design that really encapsulates encapsulates everything that was Masingo. My goodness, when this was discovered in the game, it's like, um, okay, what in the world is this? And actually, I learned recently about Lee. I believe Missingo is actually like missing number is what the actual name was. Incredible. Amazing. I love this kind of a bug in a game becomes a card for another game. So cool. Congratulations, Oni, on your fifth place finish. Next up, though, moving on to number four, Regigas the Colossus from Dr. Peace, a 7-7 Ledger Creature Titan with Reach that costs three mana in Naya Colors. Enters the battlefield, tap with five counters on it, five minus one, minus one counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove one of those minus one, minus counters from it. And whenever it attacks, if there are no minus one, minus one counters on it, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until I've turned where X is its power. And this is what Dr. Beast had to say about design. Regigas is the Pokemon games, is notable for having one of the worst abilities in the game for the first five turns. His stats are cut and he's abysmal. Then after his five turns, he becomes quite the force to be reckoned with. I've tried to keep him as faithful the game as I can. He shows up quite weak once you get all those minus one counters off he's swinging with all your creatures for a ton of damage he's got good synergy with plus one counters and things like extra combats and combat tricks there is a weakness to removal and even blink however well dr peace this is a really cool design and it's so spicy i absolutely love it and i agree yeah you can go counters you can go extra comments whatever you need to do to get those counters off because once you do my goodness that's quite the crazy effect and game ending effect again congratulations dr beast on your fantastic design congratulations on your fourth place finish Next up, though, at number three, we've got Mimikyu, Disguise Friend from Dare. A crazy cool card. 2-3, Fairy Horror. That is an Esper that says when it enters the battlefield, a shield counter on it. As it enters the battlefield, you may have it enters a copy of any creature for as long as this creature has a shield counter on it, except it has the ability. Whenever you remove a shield counter from this creature, each opponent sacrifices a creature. This is what Dare had to say about the design. I've considered a lot of Pokemon for this challenge, but eventually I ended up going for Mimikyu as it's one of my favorite Pokemon. The card is made to represent as best I could the actual Pokemon the Pokedex entry has. I am using copy and shield counters to convey its disguise ability, which prevents the first instance of damage and instead breaks the disguise. The copy part of the card is more related to it making a costume of Pikachu to be loved, but I considered it was fine for it to be a copy in any creature since Pikachu is rather specific. The card would probably play as an Esper Blink deck using copy shenanigans to get value, providing a good layer of defense for your life total. Yeah, most definitely a really cool design and one that, yeah, can be played on different ways. You can go Blink, you can go Proliferate, you can do a lot of cool things with it, cloning some really spicy cards. So yeah, again, congratulations, Dare, with your third place finish for this great design. Next up, moving on to number two, we've got Unknown Living Letter by Crystal Shard, a 0-1 incarnation for three mana, hidden power. If it is your commander, choose a color before the game begins. It is the chosen color. As long as unknown isn't your commander, it isn't legendary, it's going to get plus plus one for each creature you control named Unknown Living Letter, and a deck can have up to 28 cards named Unknown Living Letter. And this is what Crystal Shard had to say about the design. The design for Unknown was pretty simple. With 28 different variations of Unknown, you'd want to have 20 different on the field. And so, like Princess Petitioners, Relentless Rats, and Nazgul before it, you can have more than one, up to 28 to be exact. One of the Unknown can lead your deck as a commander, while all the other remaining non-legendary but the hidden power, it's choose your own adventure for how you want that spell victory. Each color brings its own interpretation, the commander not locking to a single strategy, so build anything you want that will make your opponents bow to your lengthy lexicon. I love that description. Fantastic design, really cool effect, and yeah, a spicy deck, of course, utilizing this card in more ways than it just being the commander, but also being a massive part of your deck as well with 27 other in the deck. Absolutely love this design. Spicy ways to win. Congratulations on your second place finish, Crystal Shard.
But coming in at first place, we've got Eevee Marvel of Evolution from Boras. A 1-2 Fox Mutant for 2 mana. Pay white, white. If it's a mutant, it becomes a white elemental fox with base power and toughness. 1-3 Double Strike and Prowess. Red, red. The exact same thing, but it becomes a red elemental fox with base power and toughness. 4-2 First Strike and creatures you control of Riot or blue, blue. Again, exact same thing, but then it's blue with base power and toughness. 1-5 and whenever you draw your second card each turn, proliferate. And this is what Boras had to say about the design. Because of its uniqueness, cuteness, and inclusion as a starter in the game Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, Eevee has always held a special place in my heart. I wanted to represent each of the three original Eevee Lucians as best as I could. Jolteon is represented by the quick, flashy Voltron style, relying on double strike and prowess to take down enemies. Flareground is represented by a go-wide burn strategy, pumping up a team, and Vaporeon focuses more on defensive strategies, card draw, and counters. Or if you're a madman, maybe you can give Eevee all creature types and stack all three abilities however you build it. It's bound to be versatile, unique, and a lot of fun. My goodness, Boros, this completely encapsulates exactly what Eevee is. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, you can go in a lot of different directions with this one. Or again, you can be a madman and try to make sure you can get them all. Absolutely cool. Congratulations, Boros. Well-deserved first place finish. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on these designs. Again, a massive thank you to all the amazing folks over at Custom Dragon Highlander and Elno for putting on this contest. A lot of amazing designs. If you are interested in joining that great community, make sure you check out that Discord invite link in the description below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.